like there should be music on, like playing quietly or will that interact too much? Um, I will also be copyright destroyed. Just to choose, I'm like, oh, Snoopy <gasps> wine, Snoopy wine. Cold with warm, cold with warm. Open it. So much variance. Okay, thousands of notes. I'm glad you have paper too. Yeah, because we're like in our 30s. Like most people would have like an iPad, which makes it much easier because you can zoom and scroll. But no. Hi. We're stuck in the nineties. <laughs> and you've got a highlight. I highlight your chip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She highlighted. So at work, I had to make amendments, and then I had to highlight the amendments. <laughs> so I know what bit I need to add to. I also apparently thought I was like sixty three, and that I needed like the most giant. Where plants. are you reading it from? Are you pinning it on the fucking wall? An eye test. <laughs> so, like, His name is Rich. They like, cover your red eyes. Can you read that page? And I'll be like, yeah, fucking sure. So, I'm guess what? This guy, right? Blind as shit in this eye, but I can still read that. My mum would do really well with that. She'd be like, absolutely no Yeah, like one. the mum thing where they're like. So, there's a guy, right? <laughs> So there was this guy, and then the next page, because <laughs> it's so fucking big. His name was Jonathan. Yeah. It's got to be fucking landscape, just to fit any words. A3. <laughs> it's a fucking poster. <laughs> I mean, she fucking this... rolls out a scroll. <laughs> and do that. Because apparently that helps. Just get bifocals <laughs> She's there. Very like... vocal. <clears throat> <laughs> the fucking paper. We should get my mum to read the stories. Imagine oh my mum reading God. the stories. God. We'll do the research, we'll write the script, and then we'll go, here you go, mum. Enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs> She'll be like, what the fuck is this? What, what did I raise? Who are you? Why are you looking at these things? <sighs> anyway, should we actually... Anywho. Should we actually do some work? <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hi. I don't know how to start. <laughs> what, we start by drinking wine. Cheers to do the thing. Cheers to the vlog. Cheers to murderers. <laughs> Not to murderers. Don't cheers. We don't support them. We're sin that cheers. We're interested but not supportive. It's like when your friend gets into something weird and you're like, oh. It feels like our general friendship. It's just like. That's I not see. our general friendship. Our general friendship is. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> I'm in. I'm, I'm in. so in. I mean, that like, I already know. I'm totally into that weird thing too. Or tell me more because I want to be into that weird thing. That's like when we both found out that we were like interested in serial killers and stuff. It was like, oh, oh, oh. now I have to talk to somebody about it without oh, yeah, looking like a weirdo. Before someone does this. Okay. Because I'm cool. pretty sure people at work are kind of pissing me off about it. I'm like, oh my god, guys, listen to this thing. And they're like, did you hear about this guy? I don't want to hear about this guy. I don't want to hear about the guy did the thing. <laughs> Mommy, please let me tell you anyway. <laughs> I know you don't want to know, but also, know, but also, would you like to see my notes? <laughs> would you like to read my seven-page essay that I wrote on this guy? That I've <laughs> never written a seven-page essay on anything in my entire life up until this day. <laughs> We've never passed an exam, and now all of a sudden we're like, dude, check my work, bro. Right. Check my work. I've fucking cited my sources and everything. I yeah, I've done that. I didn't even do that at uni, you know. I don't like, you know, you can't just cite Wikipedia. Like, that was what I was told. So like, you fucking can cite Wikipedia. It's not a reliable source. It is a reliable... It's not. It's not a reliable source. So then you just cite the sources off Wikipedia. <laughs> go to the, yeah, scroll to the bottom and you're like, so is this guy, this guy, nobody look at this. So that's the source for that paragraph. Okay. Thank you very much. I think you can go first. Me first. Do we need to do like a disclaimer? What is a disclaimer? I didn't. Not what is a disclaimer. Like, what is the disclaimer? I don't know. Like a content warning. Hmm. Yeah. 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 Just in case someone was like, "Oh, these girls look like they might be talking about something oh, nice." Oh, cool. like the search tag for this was "fucking serial killer and death and murder," but I'm offended. <laughs> don't talking. be offended. No, don't be offended. If you are offended, turn off now. Because there is. Graphic. No, not graphic. There's just going to be some questionable... Questionable shit. Questionable language. Questionable laughter, which is not because we find murder funny. I have to <laughs> clarify that. It's because we can't do anything seriously ever. 
and also we both have crippling anxiety and this is how we deal with shit. So anytime anything goes wrong, we take the piss and... Um, I mean, that just reminds me of some horrific things that we've said. So I yeah, think they were the quicker shit. that we... Um, so yeah, if you don't like listening to anything about blood, death, murder, anything like that, then it's not for you. It's not for you and that's Switch okay. Off. Like the most casual news reporter. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I go first? Yes, yes. Okay. I am going to talk about William Suff, a.k.a. the Riverside. They called him the Riverside Prostitute Killer, but I don't like the word prostitute because I'm woke AF. Woke. So woke. So I'm going to call him the Riverside Killer. Riverside Sex Worker Killer. He doesn't have the same... Not really, no. He doesn't have a flow... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It doesn't roll off the tongue like the Riverside Killer or the Riverside, Riverside Serial Killer. I don't know. It's quite like Riverside Killer, I don't care. <laughs> he's a prick. He's a guy. He's a motherfucker and he's an asshole. Okay, so he was born in um, Paris in, I believe, California on the 20th of August, 1950. He was Gorgeous the oldest shit. of three children. He has two brothers. One... Um, had drug problems, one was skied well. So, nice all round. <laughs> good, family. good family. Good stock. Good genes. <laughs> do you want to marry into that shit, don't you? Please, let oh, me go to a Sunday dinner. Yes, let me meet the fam. <laughs> um, <laughs> he graduated from Paris High School, um, 87th out of 144, so, yeah, yeah, in 1968. Um, so when he moved to Riverside County, California, he was 41. He was described as a friendly nerd who was always doing things to help people. Um, he was also... Isn't that just me? <laughs> you think that? Oh, awkward. Do I need to watch my back? Me? No. Or are you going to just beat no. the shit out of this and then no. one day you're going to accidentally turn yourself into the police? We don't know what oh, our future holds for us. Like but no. But no. Um, yeah, so he liked to impersonate police officers, write books, drive cars, and he did community service work. Nice, good. Good all round. Good all round. Um, however, he did, he'd spent some time in prison in the 1970s in Texas because, along with his wife, then, um, they beat their two month, daughter, two month old daughter to death. What the fuck? Right? Nice guy. Um, he was re- sentenced to 70 years um, in 19- 70. 70 years in 1974, but he served 10 years when he was released on parole in 1984. Oh, that's fair. I know, right? Yeah, yeah. Super fair. 70. 10. Yeah, on parole. <laughs> Good job. Good girl. So yeah, after this, um, he was 41 and he fucked off to Riverside, California. Um, 1986, he started work as a stock clerk for Riverside County and he liked to cook chili at office picnics. Oh no, it's this guy. Oh, it's this guy. <laughs> it's this guy. It was alleged, allegedly, it's not fact, um, it was alleged that he used the breast of one of his <laughs> victims in his chili, which were actually won the Riverside oh, County no. employee chili cook-off, although that was a rumour and it was never better. I like to think that that's true, but also really fucked up, but boob chili. Can you imagine making boob chili, taking it into work, and they're like, hey guys, do you want to try my chili? Fun fact. And then it fucking wins the best chili. But we were talking about this at work, and I was like, but boobs are just fat, like they're fatty. And then someone went, yeah, but that's where the flavour comes from. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, whoa, keep your teeth like, away from this guy. Yeah, right? Girl. Oh, that's even worse. Yeah, and I was like, what? I don't eat meat, so I don't understand. And she was like, well, yeah, that's why you leave fat on the meat, and you cook it real slow, and then the fat dissolves, so that's where the flavour comes from. Apparently. I can link. <laughs> <laughs> Just bang some Crispy food. Crispy nipple. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, oh, I got the nipple. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, right, no. so this, the boob guy. Yeah, so this is boob chili man. Um, that's what boob chili is, don't worry guys, it's not cannibalism. Oh. Um, can you imagine, like, finding out that you would accidentally eat in a boob? 
slipping a bit of it bacon into a meal right. for veggies. And it wouldn't be like, presented as a boot, like, would it either? How would you know? Apparently it tastes like know. pork. Yeah, you'd never know. I like pork. I don't like tit in any... Uh, just, yeah, carry just on. drink your wine, Charlotte. Yep, sorry. Okay, so... <clears throat> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so early morning, um, one early morning in October 1986, a local man was winding his way through the streets and he noticed the body of a young woman wedged in a drainage ditch. Wedged? Wedged. Um, this woman was lying on her back, her blouse and shorts were ripped to shreds and she was covered in blood. The young woman was identified as 23-year-old Michelle Gutierrez. Um, an autopsy revealed she suffered severe trauma to the anal and vaginal areas and had multiple stab wounds, um, which were discovered on her face, chest and buttocks. Ligature marks on her neck suggested she'd been strangled um, as the mutilations took place. Oh! Her pubic hairs had been ripped by hand from her private parts. So and that was like the era of the bush, wasn't it? That like, was like bush that, era. But, that, yeah, that's, that's why everyone shaves. <laughs> That's why everyone's like, no, I've learned. I've learned. Nobody's pointing my pubes out by hand. I will only pay for those to be waxed off. Yes. I give someone the money. Yeah, pay a lady. Yeah, pay a lady. <clears throat> so, yeah. And then, uh, less than two months later, on December the 11th, investigators were called to the scene of another homicide. The victim was later identified as 24-year-old Charlotte Jean Palmer. Um, she was from Anna, Illinois, and she was discovered near Highway 74 in Romaland. Romaland? I, I always feel upset when they have my name. Like, that's I displacement know, right? of feeling really, isn't it? Like, oh, not my name. Not my name. Um, this scene was approximately 25 miles away from the previous murder site, and it was not immediately apparent whether the two were related. Um, her body was so badly decomposed that they were unable to actually determine the cause of death. So they don't know how much she was uh, I Whatever it was, I hope it was quick. <laughs> Probably wasn't. It wasn't quick. Um, then in January 1987, the naked and mutilated body of 37-year-old Linda Ann Ortega was found along a dirt road in Lake Elsinore. The victim had been dead for three days and had high levels of alcohol and cocaine. <laughs> Investigators later discovered that she was a part-time fast food wor worker and had a rap sheet for drugs and sex work. Um, then again, May the 2nd, 1987, a 27-year-old Martha Beth Young was discovered in a ravine not far from the Ortega murder site. Um, the victim was originally from Albuquerque and was discovered fully naked in a spread eagle position. Just you've already done enough. Humiliation, though, isn't it? Like, it's oh, yeah, they're not gonna be nice. Like, oh, sorry, cover you up. Like, it's just I fucked fuck you up, but hates women and is just like, fuck you. I want to make you look as what fuck. did women do to that guy? He was just clearly an asshole, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. um, as with Ortega, she had a rap sheet for sex work, high levels of drugs were found in her body. Um, the county coroner later determined she had been dead for about three weeks. She died from a lethal dose of amphetamines as she was being strangled. Yeah, and then he didn't kill for two years, apparently. Oh, good guy. Well done. Um, so either they say he either stopped killing or, more likely, found another dumping ground, which they have They've yet never discovered. to find, basically. Oh. Um, then, January 27th, 1989. The body of 37-year-old Linda May Ruiz, a known sex worker, was discovered on the beach of Lake Elsinore. The victim's head was buried in the sand and an autopsy later revealed large quantities of alcohol in her blood. Sand was found in the victim's throat and the cause of death was listed as acute asphyxiation as her killer had forced her head into the sand and smothered her. No! Legit buried alive. No! That's the worst! Right? That's the worst one! That made me... Oh, uncomfortable. I feel a bit like I need to hide. Oh, not in a bed in this room. Take a deep breath. Oh, that's mm. no, that was... Yeah, six months later, June 28th, 1989, 28-year-old Kimberly Little was discovered in Cottonwood Canyon. Police query on the victim revealed she again was a known sex worker and a drug user. 
Her bruised and battered corpse was taken to the coroner's office where an autopsy, 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 autopsy. revealed the presence of alcohol and drugs. The official cause of death was listed as asphyxiation. Several pubic hairs, red fibres, several pubic hairs and red fibres unrelated to her were found on the body. So this is the first time they're finding like actual fucking like evidence of. So like his or is he just grabbed someone else's and he's like. 1989, local resident discovered the bludgeoned and mutilated body of 36-year-old Judy Lynn Angel uh, on a road just northwest of Lake Elsinore. She, again, a rap sheet for um, sex work, drug... It's always like lakes and ravines and like water and shit. Deserted, aren't they? It's not like a... No one's watching the sunset. During the autopsy, the coroner discovered several deep gashes on the victim's hands. So the injuries were put down to be defence wounds, which meant she tried to fight them off. Ugh. Um, she, you go, girl. Yeah, right? She fight that fucker. Fuck yeah. Fuck you. Badass. Um, she had suffered several blows to the face, um, which ultimately crushed her cranium, and that was caused death. She literally oh. beat the shit out of her. Like the guy out of Game of Thrones. Oh. Essentially, yeah. But she... Badass. Fair play. Um, then, literally a month later, December 13th, 1989, the body of 23-year-old Christina Leal was found in Crow Valley. Unlike previous victims, she was fully clothed, didn't appear to have suffered any serious abuse or mutilation prior to death. She got previous arrests, again, for drugs and sex work, um, but they did find tie tracks at the crime scene. Ooh, Ooh starting to leave the clues. He's fucked up there. He's slipping. Uh-huh. Later that day, during the victim's autopsy, the county coroner discovered that the victim had been stabbed directly in the heart. Ooh. Due to the victim's clothing, the wound was not immediately noticeable, which suggests that the killer dressed her after he killed her. Oh, well, that was nice. You must have liked this girl a little bit. The knife wound, by potenti- while well, potentially fatal, was not the actual cause of death. The victim died as a result of asphyxiation by strangulation. Ugh. Again, pubic oh, hairs man. and red fibres were remo- removed from the body, which were this later matched up to the ones discovered on the Kimberley Vessel. It was like his favourite jumper. It was like his murdery jumper. They discovered that the killer had shoved a light bulb up into the victim's womb. Like in the like womb, in, not just in. Like, because that's what I thought. I was like, oh, just in? But no, there's like actual, if you look online, there are x rays and there is a fully intact light bulb in her womb. So, like, this sick motherfucker was like, I know, a fucking light bulb. So there's a lot going on in my brain right now to try and like. Right. How did it not break? Like. That's what I was. Did he do it slow? Oh, no, sorry, there's too much. How? No. I'm never gonna look at a light bulb in the same way. I was like. A fucking light bulb. Do you think he like pre-planned it though, or did he just find a light bulb in his car and he was like, I know what I'm gonna do with that. I know. A jogger accidentally stumbled upon the half nude body of a female. They recognise her as 24-year-old sex worker named Darla Jane Ferguson. Oh, Darla. She died as a result of strangulation, um, which was so severe, she nearly bit off her own tongue. Oh. Makes me cringe, the thought that... I mean... Oh. Again, they found tie tracks. <clears throat> at the scene, my impressions, they didn't match the other tie tracks. Keep that in your mind. <gasps> oh, sorry, right, I numbered my pages. Of <laughs> <laughs> um, course you did. <laughs> so, February 1990, again, a month later, thank you. Farmers working at an orchard in Highgrove discovered the nude body of 35-year-old Carol Lynn Miller. As a sex worker, drug addict, she'd been missing for a month. I just keep bracing myself for when you're going to go in. 
to it. The cause of death was listed as multiple stab wounds to the chest and asphyxiation. Um, the coroner also made a note of a wound near Carol's right nipple. Pubic hairs were discovered on the victim, which again were matched to the previous ones. And they also found a half-eaten grapefruit, just like <laughs> thrown on top. Fancy the snack in the middle of it. Just half-eaten grapefruit. And then he has like a break, which is really odd. So either they didn't, again, didn't find the bodies, didn't link. He's got like a girlfriend who was like okay again. He was back to being that nice guy. Well, well, who made he food is. chili. Um, yeah, so you cut to like November 1990. On the afternoon of November 6th, a man working at an industrial plant in northeast Riverside discovered the naked and mutilated corpse of a female hidden under some trees. Three year old Cheryl Coker, again, sex worker drug user, she suffered severe mutilations to her body and the killer had removed her right breast and placed it on the floor next to her. The whole titty. It's just right. like, do you know what? And like, and it's shit like that now. that makes me think, like, was she dead when he did that? I know. Because, like, don't do that. Right? Take don't titty. take the booby off. Don't take my booby. Like, if I'm dead. Crack on. You know? But if you're alive and someone's literally. Mm. I don't even like getting a paper cut. Do you know what I mean? Right? I'm such a pussy, I can't do it all. <laughs> <laughs> don't cut my booby. Please don't cut my titty off, anyone. Um, yeah, investigators found shoe prints at the scene, Ooh. Um, and they determined that she had died from asphyxiation. Hopefully stroke. prior to the boob. Prior to the boob removal. Um, December 1990, a janitor emptying dustbins at a factory discovered the nude and carefully posed body. Oh, oh a bit weird. Again, she was 20, uh, a sex worker, drug addict, 27-year-old Susan Sternfield. There was no evidence of any mutilation found in the victim's remains, and they determined that she died of strangulation. So, like, there's, there's a very narcissistic part of this story where I'm just going, I hate bins, and I hate if someone took my boob, and I'm like, sorry. I hate to be sorry, by that. Sorry, guy. <laughs> yeah, like, mm. sorry. This is we're trying sorry, to empathise. Like, it's empathy. It's yeah. not. Narcissism. Um, yeah, so that's a bit weird. Or like, was he interrupted? And was like, fuck, gotta leave. Shit. Gotta go. Carefully um, pose her in a bin. Yeah. But yeah, they, they determined that she died of asphyxiation. 42-year-old Kathleen Leslie Mill. Um, she was discovered by a motorist who spotted her body alongside the road northwest of Lake Elsinore. Again. Lake? Same place. But she was rendered unconscious by several blows to the head and then strangled and she'd been let dead for less than 24 hours. Oh, it's kind of like you want it to be a bit longer so that you weren't like on the right. cusp and like, of the could, day of finding like, them. The people that, because like by this point they were like trying to find this guy. Yeah. And can you, I can't imagine how fucking frustrating that would be to be like, fuck man. Yeah. 24, 24 hours. hours. Like, oh, oh, man. And the longer it goes on, the more people and the more pressure on you as well. And it's like, right. how do you find a guy that does this Fucking shit? Man. Just post someone on every lake. Yeah. Forever. Forever. 24 hours a day. Yeah, exactly. Hope he doesn't put their head in sand. Mm. April 1991. On the morning of April 27th, a... 1991, a transient stumbled upon the body of a 24-year-old Cherie Michelle Paiser. She was a part-time maid and a sex worker. The body had been left in a flower bed in a bowling alley parking lot. By near kids and shit. Like right, just... so like right out there. Oh good. In a bowling alley parking lot. Like he's getting, he wants to be caught a little bit. He's like... He's just like... Or he's like... He's just taunting the police, like, yeah. fuck you, look what I can, I can fucking leave a body I here. can do what I want. And you still can't fucking catch me. Yeah. Like, oh, asshole, asshole. Asshole! She had been violated, strangled, and posed, and a toilet plunger had been placed oh, into her vagina. Of course. 
What else are you going to do with the plunger? Sick motherfucker. So, victim number 15. <coughs> Newsreader. Right. Sherry Ann Latham um, was discovered on July 4th, 1991. Um, she is a known sex worker, a drug user. Um, the victim's hand was wrapped around nearby branches, suggesting that she was still alive when he left her. Apparently, she had made an attempt to call away before Ugh. she died. An autopsy revealed that she'd been strangled. Um, feline hairs were just feline hairs were discovered on her corpse. Feline, feline, as in a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> just in case you didn't know, you know, cat. Oh um, no. According to the victim's friends, she did not own a cat. Did he bring a cat, or did one just crawl over her? They now are thinking. Okay, so this this guy has a cat. Yeah. Why do you have a cat? He's not killing those, is he? Thankfully, no. Don't touch the fucking cats. Right. Which is really odd because a lot of serial killers will yeah. not have pets. Yeah. Like, they don't, because they, they want just to just kill them. Kill them. Um. Yeah. So in August 1991, a man driving a grey van picked up a sex worker near the University of California. The woman um, who was interviewed told investigators that everything was fine, but then he became angry and began assaulting her for no reason. Luckily, she jumped out of the vehicle and fucking ran. Not for long. Oh. He <laughs> sped off, um, but stopped at a corner nearby and picked up her friend. Oh no, not her friend. 23 year old sex worker named Kelly Hammond. Oh. Later that same night, investigators found her naked body near the intersection of Sampson Avenue and Delilah Street. She'd been strangled and her body was still warm when they found her. Oh no. And her friend, like her friend's gonna know, right? Yeah. So woman who escaped the killer's clutches, so she was able to help them create a composite sketch of the guy and his vehicle um, so his she cat. described everything to them like bang on she even told Good them girl. that she'd noticed a red sleeping bag in the back of the van the red things the, the strands fibers. the fibers so they um, issued an APB within hours like they'd all got his composite sketch and they were like broadcasting that shit like everywhere all out it's like by this point like in the press all the fucking time. Yeah. Um, so at this point, they concluded he's got a tan coat cap. He has a 1989 Mitsubishi van. Yeah. It's grey. Good van. They're, this particular van will accept several types of tyres. Two tyre tracks. The tyre tracks didn't oh, match. Oh, it's all coming together. Um, they also concluded that if he had a partner, if, then they would work nights. Because then he could work for the night and not get disturbed, basically. It's like a nurse or something. Imagine that, like you're just there saving lives and shit, and then right. someone else is just like countering your fucking balance. Yeah. Shit. Um, yeah, so a month later, September 13th, 1991, a construction worker found the body of 30 year old Catherine McDonald um, near a building site. First glance, they thought that the murder might have been unrelated to the others because she was an African American. All the others had been yeah. white women. Um, but upon closer inspection, they noticed that her white breast had again been removed. Um, Leave the titties alone, guys. But he took it with him. Oh, of course. And the Shitty. really fucked up thing that gets me about this is like when they identified her and shit and they found where she lived, went back to the house. Basically, what had happened is like when they, they went in, oh, it's so sad because she was a single mom. And no. she fell out, put the bins out, and just never came home. She put the bins out? Yeah. I'm literally put the fucking bins out Legit, here. like, the door's open, and her four-year-old daughter was playing downstairs. And, like, no. legit, like, her mum just never came back from taking the rubbish out. Like, You'd never trust anyone to go anywhere, would right? you? Like, don't go to the kitchen. And again, like, he's, like, he's fucking, he's never snatched anyone off the street. Like, she... He just must have had like an urge that second, like I've got to do it you. now. Like yeah. it's you. Because she's so like out there. Not putting the bins out. So sad. Fuck. Like 
absolutely, oh. A month later, October 30th, 1991, a man was driving along Summerhill Drive when he spotted something on the side of the road and he's like, at first I thought it was a mannequin. It's always a mannequin. It's not, but it's never a fucking mannequin, dude. <laughs> you always dream that it's, it's a mannequin. mannequin. It's not a it's fucking mannequin. It's not a mannequin. Don't go near that They're shit. expensive. No one's leaving those outside. If you see a mannequin, call the fucking police. <laughs> Don't even look. No, no, no. For the body. And they get mannequin fur. It's, <laughs> it's a mannequin fur. Um, then he said, like, when he got closer, he realised it was the corpse of a woman. Um, she was identified as 35-year-old Delilah Zamora Wallace. Again, a sex worker, drug, drug addict, mother of five. <sighs> Cause of death, again, is asphyxiation. Sick motherfucker. Just love strength. Like, it takes a lot of effort to do that as well, right? Like. Yeah. It's not the easiest. But it's the fact that they find, like, I, I think... They get a release, don't they? Like, sexual gratification. Mm. Like, oh! And that, it, they, it's always ligature marks. So they... Yeah. <gasps> tighten something around your neck, which is probably easier than... Um, yeah. Anyway. We're nearly done. Anywho. I swear to God. <laughs> Six pages of Fucking notes. Fucking harrowing kind of research. She did a lot of research for this shit. You didn't see nothing yet. Um, two days before Christmas in 1991. Oh, Eleanor, not Christmas. Right. Eleanor Casares' naked body was found near Victoria Avenue, literally down the road from the police station. Oh, that so like, the fuck. So he's fucking messing with them now because he they don't know who he is and he's like ha 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 I don't know what he looks like but he looks like the most smug a-hole in my head he yeah he is a smug just asshole a smug. and like he's disgusting um yeah so she was 39 year old a uh, drug addict sex he's worker older. she'd been strangled again her right breast was missing <sighs> Proximity of the police station angered the investigators like big time. They were like, it fucking would. This fucking asshole. Ooh. It's like lit li arrows going, eh, eh, yeah, like, eh, you can't road, get me, and no. you still can't get me. Yeah. So, I'd be pissed off with the police at that point, I think. I'd be right. like, actually, guys, <laughs> like, could you just stake out one place? Like, somewhere? Yeah. So. On the night of January the 9th, 1992, an officer called Frank Orta was patrolling University Avenue, an area known for sex work and drugs, so, you know, keep his eyes out. Yeah. When he That's noticed, what he was doing, that's what he said. Of course. <laughs> I was sticking it up. He noticed a van, matched the OPB. It's a bitchy. So he... And then when it made an illegal U-turn... He flashed his lights and pulled it over. Yeah. The man, he went by the name of William Stuff, <gasps> appeared to be polite, but he, the officer, Alter, discovered that his driver's license had been suspended and his vehicle registration was expired. Yeah. So they fucking arrested him and was like, yeah. look, dude, you, ma you look like the guy taking you in. You're yeah. fucked. Um, they took him in, all this shit, and questioned him and shit. They did all their police shit. They did all the shit. All the police shit that they, they do. The stuff, the things. The shit. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> they located his address and all that shit, and <laughs> they obtained a warrant to search his house. So the lead investigator... How many tips did they find? Um, no tips. They read, um went to the house and he was met by his 18 year old wife so this dude's like what 40 something so like more than twice her age uh. <clears throat> who said that she was tired and because she'd been up all night at work on the night shift right they fucking profiled this dude like i don't want to point by you like I you know, yeah, you, yeah. yeah you fuck, did it fuck, you fuck did yeah, it sam <laughs> So yeah, he noticed a man with toys in the garden, and when he questioned his wife, he she told him that, that he was always changing toys on his van. Obviously. 
that they own the tank at. And the light bulb that was found inside Christina matched the light fitting above the table in the kitchen. Oh, fuck. Imagine that as you're well. You're in the kitchen fucking Like, light you're going to have dinner and you're like, dude, like, where's the, the light bulb gone? Light. Oh, it broke. Right. Mm. Um, they found shoes that matched the, the footprints. Yeah. Um, Just, it was all, it was like a little... All of it. Oh, treasure hove. Basically, he was like, yes, 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 it's fucking you. You're the fuck in. They matched the fibres to the red sleeping bag. There was, like, seat fibres, carpet fibres, all that shit that was carved. He got it. They matched him on his pubic hair. Like, it all... Like, right there and then. <laughs> Show me your pubes. Show me your dick. <laughs> oh, can you imagine? <laughs> Show me your dick. Show me your dick. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, so they started to look into him a little bit more, and they're like... Oh, fuck, man. Like, like, why? What is this dude doing? Like, why? what the fuck is this dude doing? And this is where it blew my little fucking noggin. I'm ready. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> so, they investigated further. They discovered he worked as a delivery man for an office supply company. Used by the police station. Task force for the investigation of this dude. As it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, they're ordering like chalkboards, desks, pens, paper. Any time they ordered any office supplies, William Suck was the guy delivering them, bringing them directly to the office, putting them in the fucking room where all of his shit is on the fucking wall. So he's literally, oh my fucking God, walking into the room where they're investigating him and literally just like... So he knows where they're at. Yeah, like, he knows. Time. He's one step ahead all the time. What a dick. And they had no fucking clue. No Do you fucking think he got that job on purpose? Because if he did, like, a little bit of a genius. No fucking clue. So much so, like, they just... He was just a delivery guy. And they just didn't... So much so that... Trust no one! Two of no. the officers on the case used his phone... <coughs> To make inquiries about and investigate like bits that they're investigating on this guy. So he lent them his phone. He's like, yeah, crack on, press his record. Right. <laughs> I don't know if they had that. <laughs> like, like, Here, you can Ooh. use my brick. Would you like to use my telephone? <laughs> but like, yeah. Oh my god. So this guy is always one step ahead. One step ahead. And any time that he goes in there, he's like. Genius, like the rest, I would never call him genius. And do you know what? That bit, this case wouldn't be fascinating <sighs> to me if it was just like, oh yeah, and then they caught him and he went to prison. Yeah, like you need him to be the delivery Because like guy. this is fucked. But this is why we like this though. We, we like movies. We like pop. Only, only we like fucking goes, substance and shit. What? What the fuck? Right. Yeah. If this was just a, not a boring. Murder, no. But like, but like when like dead catch boom. Yeah, like, sort of it's shit. just, oh, uh, cool, yeah, that's really grim. That's really sad. I, that is sad. I mean, it is sad. Yeah, so, oh. So, yeah, they kept him, um, I think it's, like, three months or whatever for it to go to court. Um, his trial began on March 25th, 1919. Um, so, yeah, July 1992, he was convicted of 12 out of 13 counts of murder. Um, oh. I think the one that they couldn't get him on was the second body that they found. Okay. But they were so decomposed, they couldn't even... Yeah, there's nothing you can do about it. They, they, they're pretty sure it's him. Um, trial lasted for four months. <clears throat> Over 30 witnesses were called to the stand. Um, and then the most damning of all was like the State Department Justice Criminologist on hair and fibre analysis. And she was like... Yeah. Yes, she was. Yep. Yeah. She testified microscopic scam scamples. The scampo. <laughs> microscopic samples of hair found at, t at the murder scenes matched his own hair, matched fibres from a pillow, blanket, and a sleeping bag found in his car. Those fibres will get you. Oh, van. Um, and again, they said that they matched fibres um, to the floor in his, in his car. Just <clears throat> all them fibres. They found stuff in his car from Christina's t-shirt and sock. And sock. Mm -hmm. This is the one that he redressed afterwards. Oh, so she just had one sock on. 
Oh, no, they've got, like, they found fibres. Oh, I thought... Not, like, a literal t-shirt and sock. I was like, oh, there's a t-shirt in one sock. No, no, they found yeah. fibres that matched her clothes, basically. I'm totally <clears throat> with you. Um, yeah, August the 17th, 1995, they, the jury deliberated for 10 minutes. Well, yeah, good. And they returned a guilty verdict on all 12 murders. October the 26th, they, um, sentenced him. They, the, the court followed the recommendation and they g- gave the death penalty, basically. So, yeah. <laughs> he gone. He gone go down. He's booked. Um, yeah, so he's been given the death penalty. Um, he is still alive. What the fuck? He at San Quentin Prison and he's awaiting his execution. What the fuck? How can he still be awaiting it? It's like, it's clear. Like, I get it, like, a lot. Like, oh, he's 69 now, isn't he? Yeah, just... I don't He'll die of natural causes before they execute him. Yeah, totally. Like, that's the thing. Like, and he'll be at the point where he's like, oh, this is fine. So, yeah, he's been there for like. To be fair, I prefer.